you know, we have to start with the most important questions yeah. first, the big questions that are yeah. facing West Africa. Yeah. Do you prefer Nigerian jollof or Ghanaian jollof? <laughs> I think I give it to Gambia. Gambian Jello. <laughs> Gambian Jello. Well, you, you heard it here first. Right now, there's really interesting things in music happening. Yeah. Sure. Especially around from the African continent in the diaspora. Yeah. I mean, how would you describe your own music at the moment? I feel my music is Banku music. I always say it every time. And Banku music is fusion. It's African fusion music, and I, I feel like that's what that's what most of the greats have done. Like from from even Fela. Fela's interpretation was Afrobeat and uh, more instrumental and more jazz influence and very very political you know but mine is feel good feel good fusion african fusion music and it's banku music <laughs> it all started march last year and march last year i'm in my office and then i got an email saying they want me to come do five shows in the, in the uk and i was having a laugh because i was like this guy's probably don't know. I even thought there was something sinister going on, but we come to the UK. The first show has in Leicester has almost 2,000 people there, and I'm saying to myself, wow, something is really happening here. And I feel that's where I started to pay attention. And all the money we made from that first tour, we put it back in. We came back in July. We did a massive, successful tour. We did the O2 Kentish Town. And you know, everything just started. At that point, I just said, you know what? I feel we could do this full time. So the UK has always been the central point because you know there's so much um, mixed diaspora population here and they accepted the music first and they're the ones doing bringing me everything. Most of my successes can be tied to the UK and you know we're grateful. I mean, one thing that's really interesting about your music is that it sounds very new. I mean, you can hear the Afrobeat tradition inside it, but actually what's really telling is the actual lyrics. There's real stories inside the, the pieces, and it really reminds me of kind of some post-colonial writers like Chen Yuai, Chebi, a lot of the characters in them would almost say similar things to yeah. what you're saying in your songs. Yeah. So how significant are storytelling and stories yeah. to your work? So everybody's a product of their environment, and we become whatever we're around, do you understand? And growing up, my, my grandpa used to feed me with stories, like all them stories of like the tortoise, the, the, the lion, the deer. There was always some sinister character, or some character being talked about. And I feel like that plus a lot of hip hop I started listening to like between 2008, 2010, just influences my songwriting. And this is what it is, life is just full of stories. Your life this morning is a story. You could, you could put that into a song. You could put that into a song, how you met me by the train station and how we got here. So we just need instrumentals at the end of the day. It's just stories of my life on African instrumentals, on worldwide instrumentals. That's it, yeah. And talking about like the stories, the yeah. story of your own life. Yeah. Now you talk about your music being a fusion, but you also yeah. seem to be a bit of a fusion in myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because at the end of the day, I'm an expression. My music is an expression of myself. So anything I'm talking about, I have to. You must first edify yourself, isn't it? So it's not. It's not just feel good music. It is like I put a part of me on the instrumentals every time I go in. So if you if you've met my music, you probably met me. <laughs> Right now, there's been a huge renaissance in yeah. music of Africa and the diaspora. Yeah. What is the engine driving that boom, that growth in creativity, but also in community and interest? Yeah. So I feel like we, we just have to give thanks to the internet. <laughs> you know, the internet has made the world a very small place. And then right now, I think right now, just globally, there's this search for, for new sounds, for new cultures. And we have to big up the dancers as well, the dancers with all the dance viral campaigns you can see like we almost all my records it's not been a radio push it's been a dancer push so the dancers grab the records and they do all these dance videos they put it on instagram before you know it is trending everywhere and then the music just starts to spread so i feel like it's it's happening everywhere right now and the dancers are playing a, a very key role now one of the big things right now is about how popular the afro beat kind of afro trap this new fusion sound is but a lot of it's become infused into mainstream pop music yeah. i mean how do you feel about the music being gentrified or some would say appropriated is it, this is a question i get asked most of the time and what i always say is there's always a first step right the first step is we're seeing huge pop stars love the sound and make records that sound like African music. Do you understand? That sound like Banku music. And what that's doing is 
when a kid, when, when a random kid from some country who likes an artist, say for instance, say it's a Justin Bieber, so a kid who likes Justin Bieber, and then tomorrow Justin Bieber puts out a sound that sounds like what Mr. Easy will be doing, what will happen is she's going to follow the, the breadcrumbs, and then she's going to bump on Mr. Easy, and she's going to be like, wow, this sounds like that Justin's record. Plus, it has so much culture. It has the full dance. It has the full regalia, the full lifestyle. And you're going to follow it to the bread. So you follow the bread from. So I feel like the more people from outside the culture try to, to sample the sound or enjoy the sound, the, the better it is for me. I just have to be there. I just have to be there with the bread. So for instance, like the, I think like the third biggest like movie industry right now is Nollywood. And then you have in Ghana, you have Gollywood. So you have, this thing is not just happening with the music. It's also happening with the movies. It's also happening with the fashion. So it's, it's a cultural takeover. That's what I mean by culture. It's a cultural takeover. It's like we're imposing some way or the other African culture being represented in the arts, music, fashion, movies, theater. Is, is getting on center stage and this is an exciting time. So this is not just happening with the music. And at the end of the day, if, if everything connects, like we're going to have a huge time to spend here. Man. I mean, there's so much happening right now in Nigeria in politics, especially you know, bringing back our girls, some of the yeah. inequalities between the North and the South, yeah. especially around like politics. Yeah. Do you Absolutely. ever feel pressure to get involved in politics and to be an activist and to use your voice as an artist for political change. Yeah, you, 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 know what, you know what I always say, I say there are two types of people. The, the outright activists fighting for a cause and then the bridge builders. I see myself, Mr. Easy is, is a bridge builder. Now, if bridging, if, if building a bridge between two, two different locations in, would, would have would make me have to say something or have to stand or have to be an activist in some form, then, you know, I just might be. But I'm a lover, like I always say. So if, if I would ever fight for anything, it's going to be fighting for love, like fighting for peace, fighting for peaceful elections, saying, yo, you guys have peaceful elections. You guys have good governance. It's not, it's not going to be an activist to oust or an activist to cause anything that's going to cause war. I represent love, you know. I'm just going to be an activist for love. I, I say mean, the only thing to fight for is love. I mean, all, 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 all kind of creatives kind of say that. It's a very kind of, oh, we just want to love, we just want to love. But no, I mean, it, there, but there are real is. issues. I mean, you it take the, the campaign to bring back our guild and yeah. some of the cleavages between yeah. the South. I mean, yeah. the South of Nigeria, there's yeah. real wealth. But yeah. then the North, there's yeah. real inequality. Yeah. And that plays out. And so yeah. did you ever feel the pressure you to know, so, speak out on some you know, of these you things? You know, sometimes if, if my followers on Twitter, they could see, like a lot of times I say, I always say what's on my mind. A lot of times I say what's on my mind. There's, there's inequality everywhere, not just in Northern Nigeria, not just in, even in Western Nigeria, there's inequality. There's inequality in London. There's inequality everywhere in the world. So, you know, at the end of the day, when things, when things get to me, I'm, I'm vocal about it. I might not, you might not see me on the streets, you know, leading leading a campaign i don't know if it will ever get to that stage i don't know if i'll feel something strongly enough to get on the streets but i use my tools and my tools are like my social media my my music my videos send messages in my in my videos in in my tweets you know that's that's where it is for now i, I don't know about tomorrow you never know but she got the guy where they send her money from london she they see me like a johnny just come when monkey they walk it, baboon he just they chop. I go chop all the washing, as long as you gave me my portion. Baby, make you know they rush me. I beg you, make you treat me with caution. Leg over. My baby, give me leg over. Uh -huh. Hangover. It be she, they give me hangover. Eh. Leg over. My baby, give me leg over. Ha, ha, ha.